The Ducks are seven and four and four and four in conference heading into the final game of the season against the Beavers. It's the Civil War. A 31-29 victory over Arizona State. Joey Mack and Rob Mosley here to recap it. Ducks started out much quicker at home. We've seen that time and time again. When they're at home, they get rolling. Yeah, this is one of the more the, the more prolific scoring offenses in the country at home in the first quarter and the second quarter. It's one of the worst on the road first and quarter uh, scoring offenses. So obviously that's a huge challenge going into Corvallis Friday night. But uh, in terms of Saturday's game against Arizona State, it was a huge factor uh, in, in giving the Ducks a lead that they had to frantically hold on to down the stretch of the game. I thought it was another impressive performance, particularly in the first half from Justin Herbert. Yeah. Now, in the second half, maybe he would like to have a little bit more than 13 yards passing, but still in the first half, he looked sharp. Yeah, no, at that point, you know, there are certain points in the game where you're trying to, you know, milk some clock, you're trying to establish the running game. Um, but yeah, some throws he'd love to uh, have back, one of the interceptions at least, I'm sure. Uh, so, you know, kind of typical of him the last month or so, some highs and some lows, and, and uh, you know, you're still waiting for that point where everything starts to click uh, late in this season like it did early in the year. Jalen Red had five catches, Dylan Mitchell another 100-yard performance for him. I, I really felt like, though, there were a couple opportunities for both of those two guys where the Ducks could have put the Sun Devils yeah. away. They, they just never seemed to really finish them off, and that's part of why it ended up being just a two-point win. Yeah, one of the things that was really scary as, as the second half was playing out is how much it started to feel like the Stanford game, where unfortunately Jalen Red's involved in a play that felt like it could have been kind of the last nail in the coffin if it gets completed. Against Stanford, it was the game where the pylon gets kicked, uh, Ducks end up turning it over, and kind of the snowball gets rolling the wrong way. Uh, in this case, there's a play where Arizona State jumps offside, you got a free play, Ducks take a shot, Herb's got a guy open, it's Jalen Red uh, deep over the middle, and he just lets the ball get through his hands to his gut and, and isn't able to, to catch it. So, you know, you, you complete that play, it's, hey, warm up the plane, Sun Devils, it's, it's time to go home. Unfortunately, uh, they stayed in the game and it made it really interesting down the stretch. I thought the Ducks did a really nice job defensively against Eno Benjamin. One of the better running backs, not just in the conference, probably in the country. 29 carries. That's a lot of carries for a guy that only had 149 yards. I say only, that's still a good yeah. amount, but I thought the Ducks did a nice job in the run defense. Yeah, I was pretty worried about the fact that not only was it Manny Wilkins and Nikhil Harry offensively, but, but Benjamin as well, uh, get, uh, providing a running back that really complimented them. They've had good underrated running backs the last few years. This guy's finally getting some hype to him. Um, and he was all that, um, you know, particularly their first drive, Oregon's tackling was really suspect and it was like, uh oh, this game is going to be 52 to 49. Uh, but they really shored things up as the game progressed, tackling wise, and then also just both their backs in the red zone. Um, you know, as we saw at Arizona, as we saw at Utah, this defense early in games is, is keeping teams to three during trips into the red zone. They're one of the top defenses, top 10 defenses in the country. Um, at minimizing touchdowns once they allow a team in the red zone. They, teams get into the red zone, score a touchdown less than half the time, which is pretty elite. Um, and w when you win by two, uh, every single instance of holding a team to three instead of four uh, was a decisive uh, point in the game. Yeah, boy, some of those early stops ended up proving huge. Yeah. You know, now we talk about Winning at home, the Ducks go six and one at home this yeah. season. Now they got to find a way to translate this yeah. onto the road. Yeah, and you know Mario Cristobal mentioned that in his his post game press conference after the game. He mentioned that to the team in the locker room right after the game. I mean, this is not this is not something that he just keep paying lip service to uh, because he knows it's something fans probably want to hear. I mean, he, that's his that was his message to the team too. Hey, we got to find a way to take this on the road. Um, hey, you know it's it's a, a bus trip instead of a flight, and you know maybe that changes some things, but. Um, and, and, and the Beavers are down. The Beavers are struggling. You know, this is kind of a wounded animal, but that can be dangerous too. And I, you know, the, the weather report looks like it could be a little dicey. And it just, you know, you think back to a couple years ago when Oregon went into Corvallis, thought the Ducks would be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the Beavers were game. The weather turned sour and the outcome turned sour for, for the Oregon football team. So you certainly don't want to see uh, a, uh, another repeat of that. It's a little bit of an accelerated week. Coach Cristobal said after the game that it's really not just one day early. It kind of feels like two days earlier because it's a late kickoff against Arizona State, then a one o'clock game on Friday against the Beavers. So enjoy some turkey, and then it's yeah. Oregon State. Yeah, I think you know for a guy like uh, you know a head coach of a football team, like Coach Cristobal, who micromanages every last minute, every last detail, I think that feels like a lot. You know, from the outside looking in, I think particularly I look at some of the advances the last few years uh, in sports science. You know, the Marcus Mario the Sports Performance Center and the stat that works in there and the input they've been able to give coaches about practice plans and, and workloads over the course of a week and over the course of a season, we've started to see that workloads late in the year get dialed back in order to keep teams as fresh as possible. Um, you know, so I think that that was probably going to be the case uh, anyway this week. If, that, if there's any sort of concession you can make, it's that. Hey, maybe you're in shells instead of full pads or, or something like that. So, you know, from an outsider's point of view, uh, yeah, uh, not a huge difference to a head co coach who's, again, analyzing every last de detail uh, 
uh, under a microscope, yeah, it, it feels like a big change, I'm sure. Civil War on Friday, 1 o'clock kickoff on Fox Sports 1. Ducks and Beavers, the last regular season game, and then it's time to go bowling for the Ducks.